Hey guys and welcome back to RoboCAD. In this HMI tutorial, I will explain you about the alarms and warnings and how to configure them, right? So as you can see, we have two alarms and two warnings. So I will explain you how to configure them and also the differences between the alarms and warnings as well. So let's begin. So uh, in our previous tutorials, I have created these two screens, dashboard and the home page. So I will provide the link in description for the playlist. You can watch it. So I'm going to create here another new screen and I'm going to rename it for the alarm because in this tutorial, we are working with alarms, right? So I'm going to rename it as alarm. And this screen has been created. OK. And after creating the screen, I'm going to create the tag. So I'm going into the HMI tags and I will make a new HMI tag table. So double click on add new HMI tag table. So I'm, I'm going to rename it for the alarm. So at the start, I'm going to write it alarm tag table. OK, so I will double click into this alarm tag table and I will create a tag here so I'm writing here alarm underscore trigger so I have created this tag alarm underscore trigger right and then I will go into the alarm screen again right and after going into the alarm screen screen I will single click here on the alarm tag table only one single click and you will be able to see this alarm tag that we have created I'm gonna drag it into the alarm screen and I will make sure that I have placed it onto the top of the screen here in the simulation I will explain you how to use this tag right so I'm gonna drag it and you have to make sure that you have selected uh, this tag right and you will see this settings so make sure that you are in the general settings so here we have the display format so make sure that you have selected the binary and as you can see this is 1111 for the format pattern I will explain you this format pattern for this tag in the simulation part which is going to be the later part of this video right and after that I will go into the alarm tag table again right so I'm gonna select this whole entire row for the alarm trigger tag right so make sure that you have selected this entire row and then select this discrete alarms, right? And then in the alarm text column, I'm going to create two alarms and two warnings. So I am writing here alarm underscore one and alarm underscore two for the second. And for the alarm class, I will select error for the alarm underscore one and alarm underscore two, as you can see it from here. So also we have in the settings, we have alarm class. For the errors, we need acknowledgement and for the warnings, we do not need acknowledgement. And I will explain you more while running this simulation, right? So I have created here alarms and I have assigned error for the alarm class. And now I'm going to create warning. So warning underscore one. And I'm gonna delete this second row okay so before moving on to the second row I will assign here warning for the class and check this box from here and now I will move into the second row and I will write here warning underscore two and warning has been automatically assigned in the alarm class if not you can manually assign it right I will go into the alarm screen you can go it from here as well and then I will collapse that menu and open that menu right click here and click on show description so you can see the text and in the toolbox and control section I will drag this alarm view and I will place it here in the alarm screen and I am going to adjust the zoom since I need these two windows so I'm gonna place it here because I need the second window as well for the first window I'm not going to change the default settings right 
but for the second window I will change the default settings so I'm gonna place this alarm view again and I will adjust it below the alarm view one all right so for this screen since I want the history for the alarms and the warning so I will be selecting the alarm buffer alarm buffer basically show the history of alarms and warnings and the system messages and we will see it in the simulation part okay and after that since I do not need these buttons in the second alarm view so I will select the toolbar and in this toolbar style I will select here none and as you can see the buttons are gone because I do not need buttons for the second alarm view and after that I will go into the screen management and select global screens and here I am selecting this system one so I will prefer you to select the alarm one that is the second one so it is it is basically going to be a pop-up screen right so I'm gonna adjust it on the screen and now let's move on to the simulation so let's see how it works so for that I'm going to select my HMI panel EP7100 comfort panel and click on start simulation it's gonna take some time and here we have the simulation and as you can see we are not seeing any button for the alarm so I will exit it from here and I will go into the home screen first home screen and I will drag the alarm and I will place it here right so I'm I have dragged the alarm and placed the button on the home screen and similarly on the dashboard screen as well so that we have the button for the alarm screen right so then I'm gonna select the HMI panel and I have started the simulation and here we have the button for the alarm screen so I will select this alarm screen button all right so on the bottom screen here we have the buffer so these are the history messages right so basically here we have the computer history messages and while selecting the format from decimal to binary here we have that so I'm gonna select here one 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 and hit enter button and as soon as I do that I will see here the alarms and warnings right that we have created and also in the buffer area as well and let me tell you the difference between the alarm and warning the alarm need acknowledgement and warning does not need any acknowledgement so if I write here zero and hit enter button and as you can see we only see the alarms and not seeing any warnings and it is because the warnings does not need any acknowledgement when I select zero the warning will go away and it will show in the history and only the alarms need acknowledgement we have the button for the acknowledgement when I select this acknowledgement button now this is gone away into the buffer right and it is going to be the same for the alarm one when I select the acknowledgement button now it will go away and it is because the alarm need acknowledgement and warning does not need any acknowledgement so that's all for this tutorial on alarms and warning guys so if you find this video helpful then please hit the like button and subscribe to my channel thanks for watching